everyone, it's Schematic Med, and today we're going to talk about brain sectional anatomy and MRI insight. We're going to talk about three planes axial, coronal, and sagittal. Axial plane is a horizontal plane that will divide the body part into upper and lower portions. A coronal plane is a vertical plane that will divide the body part into anterior and posterior portions. And sagittal plane is a vertical plane that will divide the body part into left and right side. Before we look at the MRI pictures and these structures, let's try to understand how we see the MRI picture and how we interpret it. So there will be no any equations which side is the right side and which side is the left side. So we're standing here. This is our left side, this is our right side. And this is the patient that is lying on the MRI scan. We're looking from the bottom of the patient's feet. So our right is the patient's left and our left is the patient's right side. That's why, how I like to imagine which side is the right and which side is the left, I cross all my two hands together and my left will be the other side and my right will be the other side of the patient. And that's how we're going to see the patient's MRI scan, the brain scan image. So our right will be this side and our left will be this side. So this is the patient's left side and this is the patient's right side. We're crossing. So this is the coronal plane. Uh, the right side is here, the left side is here. Let's start from the axial plane. Again, axial plane is a horizontal plane that will divide the body part into upper and lower portions. Here we see the picture. For this video, I took only one slice from each plane. So I, uh, the video will, need, it will not be very thoroughly, we're, we're just going to talk about the main structures in this video. So this is the cut section of for, for the axial plane and here the picture we see is not labeled and the same picture is labeled here. So the structures we can see, at first when we look at the uh, MRI picture we can see, we can imagine that this is the brain and this is the surrounding structures. When we look at the brain, we can see that the brain is not smooth. We can see that it is a wavy, and these waves we call gyri, and between these gyri we see the sulci. We can see here the central sulci of the brain, and we can see here that the color of these gyri, they are different from the middle part, right? It is a little gray. And that is what we call gray matter of the brain. We know that the gray matter consists of cell bodies and the white matter we can see here. Of course, it is not white in this picture because we're looking at the MRI picture. And the white matter consists of the cell axons. It is like pathways. And additionally, we can see very, very bright. We can say it's white structure. So this structure that we see here is a fluid field structure, so it is not a tissue, and that is what we call ventricles. So we can see lateral ventricles here, here too. And the other structure that we can see here that has very good outline is these structures. We are going to name them right now. Let's start from the red one. That is what we call caudate nucleus, two of them very close to the lateral ventricles. Next will be the putamen. Next structure will be the globus pallidus. And we can see here the thalamus. Globus pallidus and putamen together, they create lentiform nucleus. The putamen and caudate nucleus together, they form striatum. I already talked about the lateral ventricles, we can see here. Then we can see very good outline here of these structures. It is darker, right? That is what we call internal capsule. And we already talked about the white matter and here we can see the fibers that connect the two hemispheres of the brain, the left and right. That is what we will call corpus callosum. Here and here. Now let's talk about the coronal plane. This is the cut section of the coronal plane. The coronal plane is a vertical plane that will divide the body part into anterior and posterior portions. Now, this is not the same cut level. So here the thalamus is not visible very good and this is the section where it is visible. So let's start. 
again that the same thing that we saw in our previous picture previous plane we can see these waves which we call gyri the sulcuses and the central sulcus here and we can see here that the white structures which will be of course the ventricles again here we can see the third uh, lateral ventricles here and additionally third ventricle and the structures that again we can see very good with very good outline here and here and the internal capsule too and additionally we can see outer capsule here too let's try to understand what we see in the picture and let's label them so first caudate nucleus nothing new we already saw the structure on the axial plane here we can see it too and close to the lateral ventricles next the putamen, the, the colors are different, so the putamen the same. The globus pallidus, again here. Actually, the globus pallidus has external and the internal parts, so that's why it is colored differently. Next, the thalamus. Again, the two structures that we already talked about. The globus pallidus and putamen will create the lentiform nucleus together, these two. And the putamen and the caudate nucleus will create the striatum. And additionally, two structures. So we have the thalamus right here. So when we're saying the sub, it means below. So that's why we have subthalamic nucleus or STN. And the other structure that we have the substantia nigra here. Additionally, we can see here again the corpus callosum, which is fibrous band that will connect two hemispheres together. And here I want to show you one structure that we can see. We can see here the hippocampus which is responsible for our memory. And additionally, we can see here the lateral ventricles and the third ventricle. I just want to mention here that the lateral ventricle is connected to a third ventricle with the foramen monorail or interventricular foramen that will connect two ventricles with each other. So as we already know the structures, let's try to understand what is basal ganglia. Basal ganglia are a cluster of subcortical nuclei deep to the cerebral hemisphere. The largest component of the basal ganglia is the corpus striatum, which contains the caudate and the lenticular nuclei. Lenticular nuclei consists of the putamen, globus pallidus, external and internal, and then the subthalamic nucleus and the substantia niagara. So these all structures that I said are the parts of the basal ganglia. And last but not least, the sagittal plane. We remember that sagittal plane will divide the body part into left and right parts. Let's try to orient ourselves. This is the anterior part, right? This is the nose, this is the tongue, we can understand it, I think. And this is the posterior part. Again, very good depiction of the sulci and gyrosis. Right, we can see how it is wavy all over the brain. We will start from the corpus callosum. We already talked about that. This this stru structure will connect two hemisphere, two brain hemisphere together, the left and the right one. Next, let's start from the back. We can see the pineal gland here. Here, the main structure of the pineal gland is to secrete melatonin. Next, we can see two structures here. It is not very, very good depicted, but they, they are very, very important structures. We call them colliculus, the superior and inferior, superior and inferior. The superior colliculi play an important role in the visual pathway, while the inferior colliculi are important in the auditory pathway. Next, we can see here the mammillary body. The primary function of the mammillary body is recollective memory. Next, we can see the pituitary gland, which will secrete or release the hormones. And then I didn't cover it, so you can see here this part. This is the optic chiasm. And then we can see the blue structure, the lamina terminalis, and the fornix. And here is located the thalamus. And this is the thalamus, and this part is the hypothalamus. Here we can see the lateral ventricles, and here we can see the third ventricle. Lateral ventricle will be connected with the third ventricle with the foramen of the monroe, and the third ventricle will be connected to the fourth ventricle with the help of the cerebral aqueduct, or what we call it, 
the Sylvius aqueduct and it will go down and will connect to the space uh, that will cover the spinal cord. And we know that the, all these ventricles and the brain is surrounded with the cerebrospinal fluid. And these structures we can see here will be the middle brain, pons, medulla, and cerebellum. This is the resources of the pictures, and thank you very much for your attention. Bye.